किंसुझत्वा सुखं से थी किंसुझत्वा न सोचती किससे एक दामस वधंगोचय गोतम को धंजत्वा सुखं से थी को धंजत्वा न सोचती को धस विसमुलस मधुरग्रस देत्रते तंहि जत्वा सुखं से थी तंहि जत्वा न सोचती I want to continue the talk on metta. Yesterday I mentioned uh, metta we can practice and um, we have to also guard against the opposite of metta. This uh, uh, these two stanzas that I recited uh, are from uh, Sangat Nikaya. There was a Brahmin called Bharadwaja. This Brahmin uh, had a wife who was a follower of the Buddha. This uh, Brahmin was, uh, he was, he didn't care for the Buddha. He had his own uh, religion, his own uh, teachers. So one day he uh, invited his uh, priests for a feast. When uh, his wife was serving them, uh, she stumbled over something and all of a sudden, just like when something happens, uh, you know, suddenly you say, Oh God, right? Like that, this lady immediately said, uh, something like uh, Namo Buddhaya. She mentioned the Buddha's name, you know, in this inc- incident. Uh, she immediately, she, Buddha's name was in her mouth, in her mind all the time. So she immediately said, uh, Namo Buddhaya. This man got very angry. Very angry by just listening to this word. And uh, he displayed his temper and uh, scolded this, his wife and um, he could not even sleep that night. You know, you cannot sleep not only because of one type of love, but also when you have anger, when you have anger, hatred, you cannot sleep. That whole night he could not sleep. He was so furious, just hearing this word. So next morning, he uh, made a question to ask the Buddha. He went and asked, uh, now Gautama, King Sujatva Sukhanseti, what should one do? What should one kill to sleep happily? King Sujatva Sochati. What should one kill to not to worry, not to have fear? What do you suggest? And Buddha knew this man. He knew his mind. He knew exactly what he was asking. He said, Brahmin, Kodham Jatva Sukhang The Brahmin's uh, question was, he wanted to ask the Buddha, what should one kill to sleep well? He thought if uh, 
Buddha, Buddha told him, you must kill your enemy, then I will ask the Buddha, uh, are you not practicing loving kindness? Compassion, how can you ask me to kill my enemies? So this was what he had in his mind. But Buddha knew exactly what to say. He immediately he said, kill your anger so you can sleep well. Kill your anger, you will not regret. And he said, this anger is like uh, uh, food mixed with poison. When you eat the food, it is very tasty. But after eating, you will be seriously, gravely ill or you may die because there is poison in it. Buddha said this anger is like that. It kills you. It kills within your, kills all your noble good qualities. It doesn't kill you. It may kill you, you, you know, literally, but uh, 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 I mean, it keeps killing your inner wonderful, noble, good qualities. Anger has to be overcome in order to cultivate loving kindness naturally. He said, Seya thabi bhikkhave chavalatan ubato padittan majje bhutagatan na gāme kattathāya parati na aranya kattathāya parati eva ma e tājisāhaṁ bhikkhave imaṁ kurusha kubbalaṁ vadāni That means, because I tell you that the person who is filled with anger all the time is like uh, uh, the stick taken out of a funeral pyre and both of both ends of this stick is burnt and the middle is smeared with dirt and nobody will take this for no a villager takes it as a firewood, no a forest dweller takes it, picks it up as a fire, firewood. Why? There is no place to hold, hold it onto because both ends are burned and it's dirty, it's uh, dark and burned and uh, you get your hand dirty if you hold in the middle, also you get that. Similarly, one who is always in anger, hating others, uh, will uh, not be associated by too many people. People will try to avoid that person, saying that it is hard to live with this person, hard to associate with this person. So, uh, there is, uh, when anger is uh, 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 passive, it is like that, like, like this stick with uh, which both ends were burnt and in the center there is a dirt. When it is active, it is like a, a boiling pot of water. When pot of water is boiling, uh, you cannot, neither can you touch it, nor can you see the bottom of the pot. Similarly, when anger is raging, you cannot see things clearly. Whatever you say will be confusing things, uh, arousing more anger, more hatred. Nor can you see the truth, just like you cannot see water at the, the bottom of the pot. You cannot see the truth, the Dhamma, very clearly when 
वन इज फिल विथ एंगर एस्पेशली वेन इट इज एक्टिव sometimes uh, people get uh, angry for almost nothing you go to bed very you know as a, a sober person wake up in the morning you are so angry you don't know why nobody can talk to you especially Uh, many people have such a bad mood in the morning and uh, they never uh, figure out the reason why they get, they are so upset in the morning it is not due to the weather or the climate or the food for something or other is in their mind that uh, when they wake up in the morning they are angry uh, that is what is called adhana kodha adhana kodha means uh, anger that arises without any immediate cause immediate reason and that has to be taken care of by cultivating loving kindness when we go to bed and stay whole night in your even in your sleep you got to think of loving friendly thoughts and wake up when you wake up when you get up in the morning and open your eyes as soon as you open your eyes you don't jump out of your bed normally you stay you know in bed little you know twisting turning straight you know stretching your hands and legs and a little bit you no know, few minutes you stay during that time spend that time practicing merit loving kindness meditation so that when you get up out get up from your sleep and come out of your bed Uh, your mind is already uh, calm and peaceful you know sometimes uh, if you spend at least 15 minutes in the morning as soon as you open your eyes you know normally you know the time you 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 open your eyes or you uh, sleepness sleepiness uh, goes away you are wide awake but still you feel staying in bed little while if you went to bed with the thought of loving friendliness as soon as you wake up in the morning or, or uh, in the while you are in the bed remember that remember that loving friendly thoughts and cultivate it and then slowly get up when you come to come out of your bed you will not be very grouchy grumpy and uh, you know trying to find reasons to fight with people anyway find the disadvantage of anger these are the disadvantages of anger uh, we lose our friends we li- we lose our health we lose our facial our beautiful appearance on our face and uh, we always pick up very tiny little thing can irritate us uh so we become very unpleasant to others and we ruin our day we uh, may regret later on but sometimes when we regret um, it may be too late we have caused a lot of damage damage to ourselves our relations our friends our relatives even sometimes it might cost our jobs 
and some people even uh, end up their life unnecessarily because of this uncontrollable temper, anger. Uh, sometimes certain things we do which appear to be uh, to onlookers, uh, spectators, observers, uh, that we do it in anger. Sometimes things appear to be so. For instance, when a child does something, we try to prevent the child from doing it. It is something very dangerous. Maybe a child may be trying to put his finger into the electric uh, outlet. Uh, or trying to put the hand on the stove and you may be in a very uh, busy uh, moment doing something very important uh, you you yourself may be uh, uh, somebody uh, at the door and the uh, alarm is on you got to turn off the alarm before the door you open the door and you try to turn off the alarm and that is second the child also is going to put his finger into the fire or electric outlet so you are in a two very precarious situations so either you have to jump to the rescue the child or uh, ask the the person coming from outside also is coming for something very urgent to use the telephone somebody is going to kill somebody and he's coming <laughs> <laughs> rushing into the house you want to help the person so you are in a very you know <laughs> emergency situation so what can you do you are in a panic so you're going to stop the child doing this uh, da da dangerous thing you go to shout at the child to stop it not out of anger but out of utmost love for the child. You want to save the child. I don't want to hurt the child. The person outside might think that you are, you are shouting at him. It doesn't matter. But uh, shout. That is not anger. That is uh, a way of training or reprimanding, preventing dangerous situations. One time a horse trainer uh, went to see the Buddha. I think you know the story. And he asked the Buddha, how did he train bhikkhus? Then Buddha, without answering his question, he asked him a question. Uh, when Buddha want to teach, he has uh, various ways. One is uh, when somebody asks a question, instead of asking the, answering the question, he would ask a counter question to get him to uh, on the right track so that Buddha's answer will go into heart directly. So the horse trainer said, well, sir, I uh, sometimes uh, uh, talk to my horses very gently, kindly, and uh, sometimes uh, they don't obey. They don't uh, take my orders. Then I had to uh, whip them, use the whip. And some horses even won't listen to the whip. Then I cannot use these horses anymore. No point keeping that horse. Uh, I simply waste my time, money and energy. So I kill the horse. Then Buddha said, uh, I also do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> he asked, do you kill? Well, let me tell you how I kill. He said, I advise them very gently, kindly. And if they don't listen, I uh, use 
reprimand, reprimanding language. Sometimes you would call Moga Purusa. Moga Purusa means an uh, empty headed person. Uh, not actually fool, but uh, you have no uh, dhamma in your mind. So you would reprimand. <coughs> that is the second method. And if Buddha said, if that doesn't uh, work, then I kill him. So <laughs> he asked him, how do you kill him? How, the, how did the Buddha kill a monk? He would advise other bhikkhus not to associate with him. Boycott him. Don't talk with him. Don't invite him to your meetings. Don't sit with him. Don't have meals with him. Let him alone. Just boycott him. As I said the other day, when uh, we leave homes, we leave our parents, brothers, sisters, friends, everybody behind. Coming from various different families to a community. And the community is our brothers and sisters. If they all boycott us, it is just like killing. We feel so... Uh, it's it's uh, actually worse than putting in a jail. Because the, you always depend on the community support. Out of compassion, Buddha did that. Not with anger. That is what he did to um, Channa. You know Channa? Channa is the, the Buddha's charioteer who helped Siddhartha to leave home on his horseback. When Buddha and Siddhartha attained enlightenment, Channa wanted to share the credit of Buddha's atten attaining enlightenment because he helped him to go out of the palace and therefore he thought because of him he attained enlightenment and uh, he deserves uh, some part of it. And he became very proud, would not listen to anybody, would not, would not listen to anybody's advice because he thought on the one hand he was Buddha's driver, second hand he, will, he helped him to leave the palace. Even, even when the Buddha advised him, he would not listen. He said, you are Buddha today because of me. <laughs> <laughs> and now you are calling, talking, treating me like that, asking me to obey all these other monks. I'm not going to do that. I help you to become Buddha. <laughs> I'm a partner of <laughs> your Buddha ship. <laughs> so, <laughs> he would not listen to anybody. <laughs> so finally, when he was, when the Buddha was going to pass away, and this was, uh, you know, pain in the neck in all other monks, and this was a big uh, sort of uh, black sheep in their community, and he would not listen to anybody. So, Buddha, Venerable Ananda said, what can we do with this monk? Buddha did not reduce, he never reduces his compassion for anybody. His compassion was intact all the time. His loving, friendly thought was the same all the time. In spite of all this, Buddha said, now, you remember uh, the, the punishment I recommended. It is a capital punishment. Give him that capital punishment. That is boycott him. Of course, with this start, uh, you know, sometimes he, Buddha passed away. As soon as Buddha passed away, the the very first thing this monk wanted to do before he came to the Buddha's funeral, they consulted Venerable Mahakasapa 
and when the Prahlad Nanda said, uh, we have to go and tell him, uh, tell Chandra not to come for the funeral, not to associate with us. He did not know that the Buddha had passed away. So they went, two of them went to Venerable Chandra, and first thing they said that Buddha passed away. As soon as they said that the Buddha passed away, Chandra's entire complete uh, pride and everything completely dropped. Just like, uh, you know, pinching a hole in a balloon. He completely lost all his confidence, all his pride, all his power, and he was so sad. Then, Venerable Ananda said, But, brother, we have a punishment to impose upon you. We are not going to associate with you. We are going to boycott you. Don't come for anything. As soon as he made that declaration, Venerable Channa passed out, fell on the ground, unconscious. Because he was attacked by two darts, two arrows. One, the death of the Buddha. Second, the declaring that he was boycotted. As soon as he regained his consciousness, he was just like a little baby lamb. Very humble, very simple, and obeyed these things. There was no other way to hum, uh, make him humble. <clears throat> so, Buddha said, uh, this is what is called Ukkepaniya Kamma. Ukkepaniya Kamma means uh, driving away from the crowd, abandoning, banishing, <clears throat> boycotting. So, Venerable Channa, of course, since he became humble and obedient, very soon he attained enlightenment. And that is what Buddha wanted him to attain. See, his, the loving kindness, his compassion, uh, superficially at that moment for somebody may appear to be very harsh, but it was not out of anger. Buddha did not have that. So, anyway, Anger sometimes appear to be harsh, what do you call certain actions certain sometimes appear to be harsh, but uh, uh, if it done, if it is done properly, correctly, with full of uh, loving friendliness, joy, compassion, that has very beneficial results. So anger has to be overcome. First, we have to uh, look at the disadvantage of anger. And then we try to find out the cause of anger. Why do we get angry? We get angry. In the first place, we may be foolish. Actually, very uh, among ten uh, qualities of a uh, wise uh, is mentioned akrodhamarogya jitendriyattam akrodha not getting angry is the sign of wisdom getting angry all the time is a sign of foolishness so when we get very angry all the time, we must ask ourselves, there may be certain degree of foolishness in us. Not to uh, realize the disadvantage of anger, the amount of problems that, are, that causes us. Second reason, may be also due to foolishness, we may be unduly pride, proud for nothing, for some reason, either for our achievement, for our performance, for our skills, for our education, for uh, our wealth or our appearance and uh, 
for some unknown reason. Uh, we, will, we may be very proud and arrogant. Sometimes actually when people are uh, very wealthy in a high positions, in higher level of society, they seem to get more angry than other people. And that is because of their pride. They, are, they think they have reached a very high position, they have a lot of wealth, they can do anything with their wealth, so any tiny little thing can irritate them. Third cause, third reason for getting angry <coughs> is our uh, upbringing. We, we are, even when we are young, very little children, and we are not taught to be very gentle and kind and soft. Uh, some, sometimes, not sometimes, most of the time, people use very casually, I hate so and so. I hate. And it, if you don't like food, you may say, I hate that food. If you don't, don't, don't like weather, I say, I hate that weather. Any tiny little thing you dislike, you call, you say, it, I hate. From childhood, uh, people are trained to say this word, I hate, I hate, I hate. So, it becomes a habit. So, habitually they get angry. They hate. Fourth reason is <coughs> cause, causes of getting angry. That uh, being, uh, you know, uh, trying to get even with somebody sounds very sweet. You may think, well, I have done my job. He did so and such and such thing to me. I gave him in such and such a way back. He spoke to me in such and such a way. I spoke back in such and such a way. So, as soon as you heard something to um, irritate you, insult you, hurt you, you immediately react without thinking in order to retaliate. Retaliation at that moment is very sweet. You feel very proud. Even uh, sometimes uh, parents tell some children when they come home telling uh, mommy so and so beat me or daddy so and so beat me so mommy or daddy would say never come back home again tell me so and so beat me you don't you have your own hands and legs you can beat him back don't come and tell me that so and so beat you so parents encourage them encourage them to get uh, involved in uh, fights get angry. If we <coughs> train ourselves uh, um, in, 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 from childhood uh, to be, uh, be patient, gentle, uh, kind, try to understand uh, you know, little, little things that are happening in our life, so that becomes a part of our life and that becomes a habit. Uh, so we have to consider these reasons uh, for um, uh, getting angry. Third uh, way to overcome anger, Buddha said in uh, um, 
Sabbhasava Sutta, the second Sutta of Vajim Nikaya, Manasikaraniya Dhamma Manasikatabhang, Amanasikaraniya Dhamma Amanasikatabhang. Those Dhamma, Dhamma here means the mental factors, <coughs> wholesome and unwholesome mental factors, both are called Dhamma. Anger is Dhamma, loving kindness is Dhamma. Uh, cruelty is Dhamma, compassion is Dhamma, meaning all mental factors are called Dhamma. So Buddha said certain Dhammas we should not keep in mind. The Dhammas which are harmful to us, not beneficial, should not be kept in our mind. Hatred is one of those, one of those Dhammas that uh, uh, cause us harm. So we must learn to forgive and forget. We must learn to forget some uh, disagreeable arguments, disagreeable talks. Uh, sometimes certain things may appear to be uh, insulting to us, but we must learn to forget it. And uh, consider maybe the person said, might have said certain things at that time, might have met, not meant insult. It may be inadvertently the person might have said something, might have not meant insult. So we learn to forget. Uh, <clears throat> next thing we must try to do is uh, uh, try not to fall into dependent, codependent role. Uh, when somebody is angry and says something or does something in anger, if we also uh, get angry and follow the same way, same path, we are not helping the other person. We also fall into the same trap. <coughs> and we both are equal. One is no better than the other. When one is angry and speak in angry language, uh, if the other person is calm, quiet, peaceful, with full of loving kindness, the other person cannot use his anger uh, or that person's anger will not increase. It will slowly fade away, subside. There are very beautiful analogies, similes, given by the Buddha among many, many sutras, one sutra that uh, we got to remember. All these are in line with practicing loving kindness. When we try to practice loving kindness, we also must learn how to get rid of our anger. In uh, this sutra that I mentioned last time, Kakachukama Sutta, the, the sword simile, the discourse on sword simile, he said, and also he mentioned this to Venerable uh, Rahula when he was uh, giving, uh, when he gave a sermon to Rahula, what they call Maharahula Vada Sutta. Uh, Maharahula Vada Sutta Buddha put it in a different way, in a Kakachukama Sutta, the discourse on uh, uh, sword simile. He put it in a, uh, in, in another way. He said, suppose somebody <coughs> uh, comes with the uh, pickaxe or hoe and uh, try to dig the earth until earth becomes no earth, until earth disappears. He wants he might he may think I must van make this earth vanish by digging it. 
no matter how long a person tries to dig the earth with a little hole to make it disappear, he can never do it in his lifetime or not even many lifetimes. Nobody can do that. Similarly, when somebody tries to make you angry or does something to um, hurt you, if you remain <coughs> with loving, friendly thoughts, with patience, and those angry thoughts, angry words will not enter your mind. They will simply disappear. And that person can never make you angry. Buddha said to Vendabalan, Rahula, in Maharahula Maha Vasutta, Rahula, meditate like earth. Meditate like earth. That means cultivate this loving, friendly thought like earth. So no anger will attack you. Um, there are uh, in the Kakachukam Sutta he said again, suppose somebody want to uh, uh, to show his anger, he throw dirt on earth, he urinate here and there, he spit here and there, he throw mucus here and there and kick the floor, the ground here and there to destroy the, the get rid of the earth. It will not affect the earth at all. He himself may get tired of doing all these things. Earth will remain very solid. It will not affect the earth. Buddha said again to Venerable Ravana, meditate like the earth. Don't shake, don't move. Meaning not sitting in not sitting uh, in one place without moving. Buddha did not mean that. That means don't shake your mind. Stay with the practice of loving, friendly thought. <clears throat> no matter what others do, what others say to hurt you, don't get upset. Then, that is why I said uh, this uh, yeah. Yesterday I said uh, the loving, friendly, uh, friendliness thought is so powerful, so strong, nothing on earth can affect it. No weapon can beat it. <coughs> he said again, somebody brings uh, gallons and gallons of uh, paint with a brush and tries to paint in the air uh, pictures. He is wasting his paint and time and energy and brush. He can never paint anything in the air. Similarly, when the mind is full of loving, friendly thought, it will never be affected by any words, angry words, insulting words that other people lashed upon him. They get tired and you remain calm and peaceful. And Buddha is when the Balananda, meditate like the air. Meditate on loving, friendly thoughts like air, space, so that nothing will affect your mind. Again he said, somebody brings a torch, uh, burning with the flame, and tries to uh, heat and e evaporate the entire, com entire Ganges river. Of course, Ganges river is a relatively big river in India. And if somebody brings a torch to boil it and evaporate, he can never do that. <coughs> Similarly, somebody may get very angry and may try to attack you with angry words, angry thoughts, angry deeds, if you remain <coughs> with the thought of loving friendly, friendliness, it will not affect you. So, uh, we have to uh, think of 
the ways of uh, not falling in to the same in, uh, co-dependent role. That means you don't fall into the same trap as the other person is. Then we also have to think of uh, our karma, whether you believe in, in it or not, we all commit karma intentionally, always, every day. That means this very moment I am committing a karma. I am committing a wholesome karma. And you are committing a wholesome karma. What is my wholesome karma? Intentionally, I am teaching Dhamma, giving Dhamma talk. My total, sincere, honest intention is to make you understand the Dhamma. That's all. No ulterior motive at all. Therefore, I commit a wholesome karma. Because of my intention is good intention. You are listening to a whole, you are listening to this Dhamma with good intention to widen your knowledge, to gain something out of this, to apply to your own life, to make your life peaceful and happy. Therefore, your intention is good. And therefore, you are committing a wholesome karma. So, when we uh, this is what we call karma. So when we think of karma, if somebody with anger says something, does some, something, thinks something, that person commits an unwholesome karma. So you must think, why should I fall into that same trap and com commit unwholesome karma? Because when we commit an unwholesome karma, Results always will be very, very unpleasant, very bitter, very painful. It's never going to be wholesome, pleasant, acceptable, peaceful result. Always unpleasant result. So why do I, why do I want to get into that? We must think. Also we must think, we must try to uh, analyze, analyze the situation. Analyze the situation, why this person is upset, why is he or she angry? Let me try to find out. There may be some reason. You can never find out the reason of the other person's anger if you get angry. If you remain calm, you can listen. Buddha said, uh, with regard to listening, uh, uh, he said, somebody comes and uh, insults the Buddha. You, you, may, you may love the Buddha. You may respect the Buddha and love him. And you don't want anybody to say anything against him. Suppose somebody comes and insults the Buddha, using all kinds of bad words, even names, insult the Buddha. Buddha said, even at that time, don't get angry. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. He may have a reason for getting angry. If you lose your temper, if you get angry, you cannot help that person. You cannot find out the reason why he is angry. <laughs> And therefore, <coughs> uh, we have to find out uh, the, uh, we have to look at it analytically, the, the reason why so and so is angry. And also we must analyze when uh, so and so is, uh, when you are getting angry or so and so is getting angry, you must ask, uh, what am I ang angry at? at that person's hair, head, nail, teeth, skin, body, mind, feeling, perception, what? We must ask. When we keep analyzing like that, 
is actually we find no nothing in that person for us to get angry at. If we are getting angry at words, these are just mere sounds appearing and disappearing. If you get angry at their appearance, that also is going to disappear. If they are getting angry with their, at their perception, that is going to go, go away, disappear. If they are angry with, at their thoughts, even those thoughts are going to disappear, not going to stay there forever. If they are angry with their feelings, their feelings are going to go away anyway, just like my feelings. So eventually when we look at the, the whole situation, analytically, we find there is no one single particular object for us to get angry. All these objects are impermanent. There is another way of overcoming anger that is uh, also a very beautiful way. Uh, that is thinking of somebody who is a model, ideal, greater than ourselves. We think of such a model. For us, there are plenty of incidents in the life of the Buddha. So we take the Buddha as our model and think of incidents that he encountered where an average person would get very upset, very angry and he never got angry. For instance, uh, there was a man called uh, Akkosana. I think I have mentioned this in the past. It's very important to remember. Word Akkosana, the name Akkosana means not getting angry. That means this particular man's name is not getting angry. Very good name. But this man is an embodiment of anger. He is angry at anything and everything. If somebody is not getting angry, he is angry with that person for not getting angry. <laughs> People, uh, you know, when parents give names to children, they don't think of all these things, but they simply give beautiful names. So he was given this name, but he did not live up to that name. When we have names, good names, we try to live up to those names. So, one day, and he was quarreling with everybody. That was a fun for him. He enjoyed quarreling, fighting with people, making other people angry. So, one day he thought uh, the Buddha, he had heard that Buddha was not getting angry for anything. So he thought, uh, let me go and make him angry, just to have a little fun. So he went up to him and scolded him. He scolded him for all, for all sorts of things, calling him names. And uh, Buddha just listened to him, very patiently, with full of loving kindness, compassion and so forth. And at the end, from this experience Buddha spoke, uh, from this knowledge Buddha spoke, at this instant when he, when he exhausted his uh, vocabulary, <laughs> <laughs> uh, angry, dirty vocabulary, Buddha asked him, Sir, uh, do you have friends and relatives? He said, Yes, I have friends and relatives. Do you visit them occasionally? He said, yeah, yes, I visit them very often. When you visit them, do you take any gifts to give them? He said, yes, I never visit my friends without any gift. I always go with some gifts. So when you take these gifts and give to your friends, 
Suppose they don't accept it, what would you do? He said, I take home and enjoy with my family. Therefore, then Buddha said, similarly, you gave me a gift. I don't accept it. You take it home and enjoy with your family. <laughs> this is very famous incident of the Buddha's patience, loving kindness, you know, wit. There's a beautiful uh, wit in it. So, this man almost went through the ceiling. <laughs> he was so embarrassed to hear the Buddha's response. He was, many people, when we tell this story, many people say, well, uh, since he was Buddha, it was easy for him to do that. But we are not Buddhas. We are just ordinary people. We get angry. But we must not forget that he did not become Buddha overnight like that. He was exactly like one of us. Because of his perfections, practice, he practiced uh, ten perfections. Patience was one of them, loving kindness was another. Day, another. He practiced them, equanimity is another. Kept on practicing, 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 until practice became perfect and attain enlightenment. And therefore what he did was not some sort of miracles. It was just an expression of perfection of wonderful noble human qualities. So if we want to uh, live up to that, we must follow this, these examples and do it little by little every single day. And then we can reach ourselves that state of perfection. So he said, uh, with this understanding, he said, Yove uppati tanko dhang ratang bhantang vadharaye tamahan saratim rumi rasmigaho itaro jano. <coughs> I call him a charioteer who stops very speedy chariot immediately. But others are just rain holders. And he said, similarly, I call a, 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 a saint, I call a bhikkhu, I call a holy person who is able to stop raging anger at, at, at that very moment it arises. When anger arises, at that very moment, if somebody can stop it, that at that moment, I call him a saint, a bhikkhu, a holy person. Others are just ordinary living beings. If they cannot control their temper as it arises exactly at that very moment, they are just living beings, not a saint, not a holy person. So, this uh, is such an important topic. I will continue on this, um, I will continue this topic tomorrow. So, we must remember one of the things that we had to cultivate in order to over uh, uh, that we had to overcome in order to cultivate loving friendliness is anger. Without controlling our anger, don't try to cultivate loving friendliness. It's not going to work. So the, we have we, we have to make two prone approach. On the one hand, we must try to minimize, reduce our anger. On the other hand, we cultivate loving friendliness. Without trying to control our temper, anger, we cannot cultivate loving friendliness. It is always a, it's a losing battle. Losing battle. 
and therefore um, we have to think of both together uh, then when we think of practicing loving friendliness compassion and so forth i think this may be enough for us at all uh, i'll continue this tomorrow there are so many things to say about loving kindness and uh, so tomorrow i'll continue it and you know, so, uh,